Okay, guys, really excited to say I'm joined again by Andrew Gibney today, Andrew of Football Whispers, and he's written about French football pretty much everywhere. Andrew, I want to thank you first and foremost. You promised us Alexandre Lacazette would score goals. He's made a, a really good start in the Premier League. We must have been pleased to see him get off the mark against Leicester. I was so happy. I was watching uh, Leon Wren uh, on the other channel and, and they said Lacazette scored after like, so many seconds. I was yeah. like, inside going, yes. That's what we need. <laughs> uh, it's, it's such a concern because you pick up these guys and then if they're failures, like, people come back to you. So... I know. Regardless of what happens, I'm safe for a few weeks now. Well, you're talking to the man who thought Sebastian Squalacci would be a sensible signing for Arsenal. So, you know, we've all got mistakes in our past, but so far so good on Lacazette. Um, anyway, I, I wanted to ask you today about another player who Arsenal have been linked with all summer long, based in France with Nice, uh, and that's Jean-Michael Serri. I'll be honest, I did not see a lot of Nice last season. Can you just start by just telling us what sort of player Serri is? Yeah, he's he's a he's an interesting one. He's quite different. You can't you can't say he's a defensive mid. He's not an Angolo Kante. Mm. He's not quite a sort of Blaise Matuidi box to box. He's kind of, it's a weird sort of hybrid of everything. He, he he doesn't. You look at his stats. He doesn't win a lot of tackles. He doesn't make interceptions. But he just harasses people constantly, and then they make mistakes, and somebody else will pick up the ball. But it's through Seri's hard work that they sort of they win possession. And then when he gets the ball. He's looking forward. He can pick passes. He's got really good control in tight situations. When you see him under pressure, he's, he's never phased. A couple of touches, and he's got that speed and burst to get away. And, he, and he's quite small, but he's powerful. And he's got everything in his game. He, he's got goals in it. He's, he's a really underrated passer, loads of assists. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's, he's such a... I, I got to see him. I went to Ajax Nice uh, last week and got to see him sort of in person and you sort of appreciate even more just how good and how intelligent that this player is. Doesn't sound too bad. I mean, from the clips I've seen on YouTube as well, it looks like he delivers a, a decent set piece as well. So it's got that in his armoury too. What position has he been playing with Nice? Is he playing in a three? Is he playing in a two? What's he been doing generally there? Yeah, they play mostly in a three. Uh, Lucien Fabre started playing 3 5 2 at the start of last season. But it went into sort of a sort of four two three one, still technically a three three four three. So it's mostly he is sort of the I would say the centre of a of a midfield three, but he's yeah, he, he doesn't quite set, he doesn't he's not a number ten, he just anywhere that the ball is or where he needs to be, so he's usually there. Right, OK. Well, that sounds sort of right up Arsenal Street, really. I mean he's been linked with some really big clubs this summer. Arsenal are one, Barcelona have been another, uh mm. Liverpool the latest. Do you think that he's at that level? Is he ready to move to a club that size? It's probably a little bit similar to, to Kante because Kante went from League 2 to League 1 and sort of seamlessly transitioned there and then Premier League, we all know what's happened. And Seri, two years ago, was playing for a mid-table Portuguese team, eh, Pacos Ferreira. So you wouldn't, sort of, you wouldn't say that it's not possible that he can step up and there's no reason why he can't. He's played in the Champions League already. Like he was instrumental in... Uh, nice getting past Ajax mm. uh, and you, you look at all these players like Usman Dembele and Mbappe sort of sitting out or missing training because they want to move Sorry, he wants to move and Nice are happy to sort of if he goes but they all want that right price and he's happy to get his head down and train and play for them while he does it which shows a really good attitude as well so I, I don't see any reason why he can't make that that step up again mm. and go on to but any of these clubs mentioned I think I've written about Barcelona where it's fit, I've written about Arsenal where it's fit, Liverpool you can see him being a, a Naby Kate as an alternative, yeah, he's, he's that good. Wow, I mean, what's the situation as far as you understand it with, with him and Nice, there's been talk of a, a buyout clause, other people have said well buyout clauses don't exist in French football, what, what do you understand Nice's position on Serie's future? Yeah, they've been quite clear since, since the word go, uh, the president of Riviere said if someone puts in a 40 million euro bid, we're happy for, for Seri to go. And Roma tried to sort of low ball in the 30s area. Mm. And they're this adamant that it's, it's not a release cause, because as, as you rightly said, it, there's not like Spain where you have to have them in. There's a few gentlemen's agreements that get made. I think mean, Lasana Diaba at Marseille was one, and then Marseille sort of balked on that and didn't go through with it. Right. But Nisa nice said, if someone puts in 40 million euros, they can talk to him and he can go. It's not an issue. And I think they're, they're planning for him to go. 
I think they probably thought he would have been gone before now. Uh, so it's just waiting for someone to put that money in. And there's, they're not in a, a situation where they need cash. Mm. They've got uh, Chinese investors. So they're not struggling. So they were happy to wait. And I think Sarri's quite happy. He knows he's going to play against Napoli two legs if he's still there. He's going to play in Ligue 1. There's no rush from either side. So it's just waiting for someone to stump up the cash. OK. As far as I understand it as well, if he plays in those qualifiers but moves before the Champions League proper, he, he'll still be eligible to play for another team. So that yeah, could be... I think be... if Nice go out, I think... Ah, OK. OK. Right. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed they do. <laughs> for Napoli. Right. Yeah, exactly. I'm a Napoli fan. Uh, I mean, so, so do you still ex- do you expect him to move then with all this talk? Do you think he, he probably will go before the deadline? Yeah, I think if he'd have looked maybe three weeks ago and said €40 million, Euros, yeah, that's a lot of money. Now it's looking like an absolute bargain. The Steel, way that- yeah. Yeah, prices have gone incredibly high. If Navi Kate is worth seventy, why isn't Seri worth worth forty? He's a he's a little bit older, but he's in contract. He's still got the best years ahead of him. Yeah, I think it's an, the way this window's going now. It looks an absolute steal. I think that might be the hesitation for some Arsenal fans. I guess seeing you know he's he's twenty six, Seri. Um, you know, where's he been might be the question. Where, why has it taken this long to, for him to come to the fore? But I suppose the example of Kante is a good one where players can almost come from nowhere uh, and suddenly take the lead by storm. And fingers crossed, he's someone who's on that similar trajectory and could have a similar impact in the Premier League if he does move over. Yeah, it's all about sort of position where they are, where they're playing. Riyad Mahrez wasn't even a regular for Le Havre before mm. he went to Leicester and people are willing to pay that for him now as well. And look how well he done it's just getting these players in the right position where you see them and then they impress and because even the season before at least Seri was was good what Napalas Mendy was the the, sort of the leader in that team and Seri was uh, the next guy and they've got uh, Vincent Cosiello and other youngsters really highly rated it was only last season where Seri so I took that team and made it his and right. he was a midfield general and that's probably why you noticed them more last season than, than before that and obviously, you know, looking at English football and French football, you're in quite a privileged position to make this call. Do you think Sarri, specifically at Arsenal, could be a good fit? I think English football suits them really well. And I think France is the best place for that. So sort of the physical side, you, you can adjust to that fairly quickly. Mm. He's, he is very powerful, very energetic, similar to that Kante sort of style. And in Arsenal, if you're playing 3-4-3, Put him beside Jacka. Yeah. He's going to he's going to cover a lot more space than the other midfielders in that role, and he's going to get forward the same way that Ramsey gets forward, but also be defensively sound like Coquelin or El Nene. So I, a mould of all of them together. I, I can't see why it wouldn't work. I really can't. That that mm. that's what will really appeal about him to Arsenal fans, I guess, that he offers you the energy of Ramsey, but maybe a little bit more defensively secure. Mm. And potentially someone who could play maybe with a Xhaka or with a Ramsey, or if Arsenal do switch back to kind of a, a more of a traditional four-three-three, that could be a nice three as well with a, a lot of balance in there. Yeah, even the, if Jack is out, he's got the passing ability to, to take that role as well. He really has got. There's not. I can't really think of a weakness in his, in his Arsenal. Really, that's. <laughs> yeah, was, I'm, I'm bigging him up for a massive fall here, but he is. He, he's got everything all around. He wants, and he's really hard to. When someone asks you what is he like, it's very hard to, to find a similar player. He's got bits of Kante, bits of this, bits of that. Yeah, a really, really, really interesting and quite special talent. Wow, well, it sounds absolutely fascinating. Thank you, Andrew. I just want to check in with you. I've got another guy linked with Arsenal all summer. We spoke about him before, Thomas Lamar. I just wondered, <laughs> over on the French side, has there been any update at all? What's his position like at Monaco now? And do you think, do you think that deal is kind of dead in the water at this point? I mean, I, I never gave it a massive chance of it. Monaco, he was one of the, him and Mbappe, the ones who really wanted to hold on to. Yeah. And it's gone, in France, it's gone really quiet. There's not a lot of mention of it mm. at all. It's all from the English side. And he's playing for Monaco and he's, he's playing well and everyone seems happy. I think it's probably the Mbappe situation. It's probably the the, the, the biggest sort of what if, because if Mbappe leaves and then Fabinho leaves, you are basically left with Thomas Lamar as the one star left. Mm. Will that then force him to think, actually, maybe I'm better off away? Or, I mean, he could see it the other way and think, well, this is my team now. Me and Falcao will do, we'll do it all. And, yeah, they've still got a really strong spine from that team last year. Just, I think, there could be a tipping point if those two leave where he thinks maybe. But, again, I think it's still going to take a massive offer because Monaco are in no place to need to sell. So that's what 
always put me on the edge of saying he was going to go, and I think it's the same situation now. Okay, and when you look at the Arsenal squad, to be honest, I think they need a Sarri more than they need a Lamar. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where Lamar fits in that the three four three apart from yeah. the left wing when the, it's just, yeah, and you've got the class and would be a good partnership there possibly, but yeah, I think I think you're right. The Sarri fits, and it's probably what Arsenal needed for probably since Vieira left. If I'm mm. honest, right. Well, there you go. I mean, quite a, a ring endorsement. Thanks so much, Andrew, for joining us. And uh, I'm sure we'll probably speak to you again before this transfer <laughs> window ends. <laughs> Cheers, James. Thanks very much.